Was that everything you hoped for? Jury's still out. But man, you can't deny that view. Come on, this way. When we first came up with Ellie and Joel, we had this idea in our heads of who they would be, but we didn't necessarily know the voice. It took us a while to find our Joel, but for Ellie, I think Ashley was the second or third candidate to walk in, and right away we knew. Yeah, you know what? Why are you so scared all of a sudden? Because, because I'm a coward, okay? So just get your shit, let's get out of here. Damn it. Not like her, you know. What? You think I'm gonna end up like your daughter? The way she delivered the lines, the way she just embodied that character is like, that's Ellie, there's no question about it. I saw the character artwork and I related to her a lot. I mean, she's kind of a tomboy and she's kind of tough. And I mean, obviously I'm not 14 and I think that's the main difference between the two of us. I read the scenes and I was like, I need to play this part. You want to be my hero? Forget the whole bit about saving my life. Buy me a stack of these bad boys instead. Where'd you get that? Back at Bill's. I mean, all this stuff was just lying around. And then once we had her, we said, okay, well, we're going to do another round. And so we're going to have Ashley this time in the casting sessions. The chemistry of these two characters was imperative to get right. Troy was a really interesting casting for Joel because when you see Troy, he doesn't look like Joel at all. You know, he's so handsome and he had like, you know, the frosty hair and totally looked like Final Fantasy. And so... <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I don't know. He's like this tall, pretty... Um, it didn't seem right. I walked into the room fully aware that I was the youngest person that they were seeing for this role. And it was a line that was in the audition side that says that Joel has few moral lines left across. And so that became the anchor point to the character. But then as soon as he spoke, and he had the grit in his voice. Warm, yet kind of dangerous. And his movement is just like, you bought into it. Why are you so scared all of a sudden? Because I'm a big coward, okay? Now pack up your shit and let's go. God damn it. I'm not hurting now. What? You think I'm gonna end up like you? You are treading on some very thin ice right now. It was Ellie and Joel. After he read, it was just like, that was that was it. I've done some video games in the past, but to be handed the mantle of a franchise like this was a pretty big honor. Is she alive? She's alive. She's David's newest pet. Ah! Where? In the town. She's in the town. Now you mark it on the map. It better be the same exact spot your buddy points to. Neil pulled me aside one day, and he said, I have some ideas. And as you're well aware, uh, Neil is a little twisted. He came up with this character, and you know I just jumped at it. It was such a departure from everything I've done here for Naughty Dog, uh, to say the least. Name's David. This here's my friend James. We're from a larger group. Women, children. They're all very, very hungry. To be able to put on a voice that, you know, hopefully a lot of people won't know, uh, won't notice that it's even me. Because we didn't want it to be Drake. Drake eating people, that's... That's a whole nother game. How did you put it? Tiny pieces. See you tomorrow, Ellie. You know, certain voices that I can do wouldn't fit the David's artwork, and but he showed me the art, and I, I said maybe it's something like this where everything's, you know, it's very quiet, and just you know he's not really sure, and the voice can break a little. And he just looked and goes, yeah, that's it. So it, it I, I'd love to tell you we hashed it over and we talked. No, it was, it, it just I looked at the picture and I tried something. He said, yeah. A few weeks back, I. Uh, Sent a group of men out to a nearby town to look for food. Only a few came back. And turns out that the others had been uh, slaughtered by a crazy man. <laughs> and get this, he, 
he was with a little girl. You see, everything happens for a reason. Clear. Ashley, she brought humor to it. She just has some really great comedic timing. The way she reacts to the things around the world with a little bit of sarcasm, that teen kind of like trying to get a rise out of you. Now watch your step as you're going out, because it's gonna be a little <laughs> It just brought a certain levity to the story that the story needed. And you didn't even realize it needed it until she started doing some of that stuff. Oh, I'm sure your friend will be missing this tonight. Mm -hmm. It's uh, light on the reading, but it's got some interesting photos. Now, now, Ellie, that ain't for kids. Whoa! How how the hell would he even walk around with that thing? Get rid of that. Now, hold Just... your horses. I want to see what all the fuss is about. Oh, why are these all stuck together? Um. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you. Bye-bye, dude. Throughout the course of shooting over these past couple of years, Ellie and I have kind of morphed into each other, which I know sounds so cheesy. Neil always asks, he's like, well, what would you do in this situation? I think the most important thing that Ashley brought is a sense of capability to Ellie's character that wasn't there in the beginning. The very first thing we shot involved her being pulled out of a car and attacked, and Joel was supposed to go save her. It was written that Ellie sort of was just kind of watching on the side, just waiting till he was done, and I was a little frustrated because I was like, well, I, if this were real life, I would do something. We did a couple takes, and at some point she walked up to me and she said, I feel like I'd hit him. So we added in a part, like, you know, right there off the bat, she's not just this damsel in distress. Right there, she wanted to fight back from her very first day of shooting. We didn't have it right initially. She needs to be more capable than initially we thought she would be, and actually that made us go back and rethink combat and rethink a lot of the areas in the game. And now she was going to take a much more active part. <laughs> Anything that requires, you know, a lot of body movement, we do with the actors on the mocap stage. And we try as much as possible to use our actual principal actors, use their body motion as well as their voice. We capture it all at once there on the stage. Having the actors perform as well as being recorded at the same time was imperative to get an accurate performance. Because every time you, you split up the performance in any way, you lose some of that magic where they, they did a gesture or they delivered the line a certain way. And those things have to be in sync or there's just something subconscious that's like off-putting about the performance when you don't do it that way. You are treading on some mighty thin ice here. I'm sorry about your daughter, Joel, but I have lost people too. You have no idea what loss is. Everyone I have cared for has either died or left me. Everyone fucking except for you. So don't tell me that I would be safer with someone else because the truth is I would just be more scared. It gives you the most authentic, most realistic performance because you're actually there, not just making your own choices, but making your own choices based on the other people that are involved in that scene. So you get this truly um, natural approach to things and it shows up. It's like theater in the round. You can do anything from any angle and the smallest, most subtle thing will be able to pick up. There's no place to hide. So you have to be as prepared as possible because you have no idea which moments they're going to use. There are these little improv moments and you know little nuances that you get that probably isn't scripted that just comes out of play you know while they're performing that that mistake that is just blossomed into a really good idea. Did we improv on The Last of Us? Yes. Yes, we did. Doing this was a whole lot like being five, playing in the backyard with a stick, you know, and this is my machine gun, and you know, and a pine cone is, is my hand grenade. It's all your imagination. I'm doing the exact same shit that I did 45 years ago. I just get paid for it now. We square. We're square. And get the fuck out of my town.